<laughs> hey, how you doing? Mr. Krause back from NK Infinity and beyond. At least, I don't know if you're used to watching my videos. They're normally like an hour long. They're kid They go on for infinity and beyond. By the way, all of this stuff can be found at nkinfinity.com. The N stands for my partner in crime, Miss Newman. I am Mr. Krause. You want to take a picture and see what we look like? Check those out. There should be a link probably underneath teacher's section, I'm not sure, that says T.I. Inspire videos. Um, if you don't see a video that you want, there's going to be lots of them up there. Right now, there's none. I'm just not going to lie. These are the, this is the second one I'm doing. But eventually, there's going to be lots of them. A lots of them. There will be many of them. And if you don't see something you want, that maybe it's a more high technical, you're just missing something, you just want to know how to do it, Text me, or don't text me, email me, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll get it done. Won't take any time at all, we'll get her up there, and I can probably answer your question anyway, and then perhaps I can put a short video up there, okay? So today, all we're going to be talking about is solving systems of equation using the graphing calculator. You'll know that a system of equation, first of all, you should have a general idea what these are. This is an absolute value that's gone down, doesn't quite look like that. That's just gone down. This one here is a linear function, kind of looks like that. At some plate, they hit each other. Those are called the points of intersection. Intersection. And as far as this problem goes, those are the solutions. Those are the solutions to this equation. So where two graphs meet are called points of intersection. And in this case, that's what we're going to be looking for. But we're going to use the graphing calculator to do that. So I'm going to toss this off to the side over here. And we'll use this graphing calculator. Now, these videos are all for this TI Inspire. Kind of looks like this. Uh, that's the one you want to get if you can. There will be links on my website on how to get it, an emulator for your computer or for only $27 a year. Or you can buy the thing outright. And I, man, I can't stress enough, this is a great calculator to have. All right, we're just going to go into graph mode. So while I'm in the home screen, I click on the home screen, I can do one of two things. I can either click on graph or I can click on this. It really doesn't matter. When you do this one, you're going to open up a new document for graphing. Not a big deal. Click no. If you click on this, you're just working in the scratch pad. The scratch pad really doesn't just get saved. You, you close out of it. It's still there. But whatever. Um, so we're going to graph these two functions. So I just did a video on absolute value. So if you don't know how to do absolute value, you might want to go watch that one. But here's a short little tutorial. Not it, The absolute value bars are right here. These two buttons above the, the division and times button, you're going to be using those a lot. If you use this calculator, you're going to be using a lot. The biggest one you use is this one that's all weird looking right here, right above the times button. So we'll click on that. And there's a whole bunch of things in here. And as you progress through mathematics, you know, you'll probably use through here and then maybe a couple of these. And then these these ones down here, you're using uh, calculus. And some of these you'll use in differential equations when you get lots of stuff there. We're right now just going to use the absolute value bar. So the absolute value of x, now to get rid, to get out of, because if I just type now, you'll notice I'm inside the absolute values. I don't want to do that. To get out, you just use this pad here, all over right here, and all you're going to do is click to the right. All right, and now I can type in minus 4. That should be an absolute value that moves down 4. Not a problem. To get a second graph on here, to get another graph to graph on here, you simply hit the tab button. As soon as you do that, you're going to see where it says pops up F2. Oh, hit the tab button. You see F2. That says, okay, what is your second function going to be called? All right, 4x minus 2. This will be done in a different color, which is kind of nice. There it is. Wow. So points of intersection. In this case, it is a point of intersection. Because do you notice that these two lines are parallel? So they only have one point of intersection. I don't know how I just did that. By the way, I just accidentally changed that. I don't know how I did it. So let's say you screwed up typing it in. Or let's say something like weird like this just happened and you want to fix it. The simple way to fix it is just hit the tab button. Notice it's saying, okay, what's F3? I don't know why it's clicking like that. 
Hit the tab button. This is okay. What's F3? I, you know, I don't want F3. I don't want F3. Okay, so I don't want F3. But you want to go up arrow. It's like it's like there's a list. F1's right here. F2's right here. And this is F3. And you're like, I don't want that one. I want this one that's right here. You just can't see it. It's hidden. So if you hit the up arrow, it's there. There it is. And somehow we got it all messed up. So oops. If you ever get into a menu that you want to get out of, or if you get into anything that you kind of want to get out of, like right now I'm in like all these menus. I'm like, ah, I got to get out of this stuff. Just hit the escape button and hit the escape button until they go away. So we'll delete this. We'll do this right this right again. It's 4x minus 2. 4x minus 2. Now we call this... Anybody see why they didn't fix? 4x minus 2. Enter. All right, let's do this. Close it. Graph it. All right. I'm not sure why that's doing that. We'll just do it. Clear out. If anything happens, you do doc B. It gets rid of everything. You like start with a fresh one. Doc B is great. Gets rid of everything. Notice I'm on F1 again. And I'm just going to do real quick. It only take me a second. I have no idea why that happened. Absolute value of X. I'll get out. Choose minus four. Hit enter. I'll press tab. I want the second one. Four X minus two hit enter oh oh i must have not typed the other one incorrectly there's 4x minus two which is what i had here oh you know what i typed in i typed in x minus two i forgot the four i had all kinds of mistakes on that one all right there's 4x minus two it doesn't matter there's still only one point of intersection it's right there i don't know what it is but it's right there now the buttons you're going to want to get used to are the menu button these two buttons, you do a lot with these. So right now we're going to click on the menu button. And I can go through. It gets kind of tricky. I know which one do I want. I want, I want. I really want. See, I'm going to get out of that. I want analyze graph. That's the one you want. Analyze graph. There's lots of cool stuff in there. You can find them. Zeros, minimums, maximums. But what we're looking for is intersection points. So we click on intersection. Now, as soon as you do this, you get a line like this. Now, what you have to do is move your finger around this thing. Okay, I'm using an emulator, but what you're going to want to do is just slide your finger around here, and you slide it back and forth, you'll see it do this. And down here at the bottom, it says, okay, what's the lower bound? And what they mean by lower bound is get to the left side of where these things are equal, and then get to the right side of where these things are equal. It's basically, it's saying it wants you to put two dotted lines and the point of intersection should be somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to get to the left side of this thing. It doesn't matter. I could be way over here, but I'm going to put it right there. I'm just to the left side of it. Notice there's the point of intersection. So I'm going to go to the left, click. Now it changes. Okay, it says upper bounds. Oh, I got to go to the upper bound. Click, 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 click. Go to the upper bound. There it is. All right, point, negative 0.4 and negative 3.6. Those are my solutions. All right, so... Let's go. Let's try another one. Now, in order to graph, by the way, remember what we want to do to get rid of these. We choose doc and then B. And gets rid of that. Now, in order to graph, you still have to be able to do a little bit of work because just these are my equations. But if I come over here and I go into graph mode, it's saying, okay, what's Y equal to? Remember, F of X is the same as Y. So you're going to have to get Y. So I'll add X, add X, and I get Y equals x plus 3 for this one. And this one over here, my y already is positive, so I need to bring the x squared over. So I subtract x squared, subtract x squared. So on this one, I get y is equal to x squared plus 5. I'm not sure if these are actually even going to hit. They may not hit. I might have to change this. I thought this is one where they were going to hit, but maybe not. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait a second. I subtracted x squared, so this should be minus x squared. Oh, they're going to hit. I knew they were. All right, so our first one is negative. Here's the negative button. Negative x squared plus 5. It's a parabola coming down. There it is. Very simple. Now we're going to press the tab button. We're now on f of x, and we want to just type in x plus 3. x plus and it looks like there's going to be two points of intersection. They actually look like they're nice points of intersection. They look like they're nice. I can do one of two things. I can go to the table. To get to the table, you do control T. And you'll see one line here in blue. That's the parabola. And one line here in red. 
And let's see if we can find out where the blue and red are equal. Oh, look, they're equal right there. See, four and four. So one, four is one of the answers, one, four. Let's see if we can go down and find another place that they're equal. Not really here, is there? Not really. So let's go this way. It's getting worse. So we had one, four. Any other place where they're equal? Ah, here, look, one, one. So we got another point, negative two, one. So those are my two points of intersection, but I don't have to do it that way. I could do it like this. Check this out. Go into menu, analyze graph, intersection. I can actually do, click here, and click here, it tells you one. Click here, it tells you the other. See how I did that? I, I just use my finger. Here, if you look right here above this hand, it says negative two, one, and keep sliding over. And right here above this finger, it says one, four. So it will find both of them. Now, if you click there, it's only going to find the one. And it says, okay, there's your one point of intersection, negative two, one. Uh, and then I go menu, analyze graph, intersection, click to the left side of this one, click to the right side of this one, and there it is, one, four. So I can use the table or I can use the graph. All right, one last one. Let's solve for uh, x here. So I'm going to subtract two x. So I get y equals negative 2x plus 6. Hopefully my big bald head is not in there. I got to get, oh wait, I forgot I was going to show you one thing. Let's say you're like, oh man, I don't really want to see that line right now, but I don't want to have to erase it. Hit the tab button, and now what you have is like a queue of graphs up here. Right above this one is f of 2, and right above this one is f of 1. So if you ever want to get to them, just hit the up arrow. Oh, there's f2. There's F1. There's F2. And if you don't want to see the line, but you don't want to have to erase it and then retype it, just click the arrow, click that button right there, and it just goes away. And now you can just look at the parabola. All right. If you want to get rid of everything, you hit Doc B. Doc B gets rid of everything. All right. So we're going to graph. Let's go back into graph mode. And we're going to hit the absolute value. It's right here above the times button of X minus 6. X minus 6. And then plus 1. And we hit enter. It's a parabola that moved to the right six and up one. And now we got this one, negative two x plus six. Press tab, negative two x plus six. Enter. Man, I can't see where they grab. I know they're probably going to hit up here, but the way it is right now, I can't tell. So the easiest way to do this is to adjust your window. And I know all I really want to see is down over here, but I really need to see more Y's. That's all I really need to see. So I'm going to go over here to my menu, and I'm going to go into Window and Zoom, and I'm going to go to Window Settings. A lot of times you want to be in Window Settings. And all I want is more Y. See my Y max here? I, this 7 is not good enough. Maybe I'll just change it to 20. I don't know. Maybe 30. I don't care. If 20 is not enough, I'll go to 30. Ah. Oh. 20 was enough. Now I can see my point of intersection. Now I can go menu, analyze graph, intersection, click on the left, click on the right. There's my point of intersection, negative 1, 8. If you ever want to get back to what the graph looked like before, just go menu, window, and zoom, and zoom standard. It takes you back to the normal window. By the way, I think this intersection works uh, even if you don't change the window. Point of intersection, click on the left. You know it's over here somewhere. Just click to the left, click to the right, and there it actually recenters it for you. Isn't that nice? It's kind of nice. All right, that's it for that one. Again, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't know how to do something on this calculator, send me an email. I'll put a short video up and I'll try to answer your questions. It's been great. Most all this stuff can be found at nkinfinity.com. Goodbye, kids.